Hi, this is Debbie. Welcome back to Cheyenne, Wyoming. Urban gardener and um, a little out of breath because I went up to get my phone and I was thinking, well, this is the last bit of daylight that we have today. Today is May the 28th. And uh, just looking at everything that we've got going as far as plants out here in the garden and in the container garden, we have a lot of containers, as you can tell. We have some new additions to some of the stands, some of the potting stands um, that you can see here. We've got this one right here. I picked this one up at the Goodwill. I like picking, picking up um, pot stands at the Goodwill and it held my marjoram and one of my mint plants perfectly. And uh, we got so much other stuff going on now. My fuchsia still looks pretty beat up because it's trying to adjust to the weather. But you can see it is blooming, so it is going to pull out of it. So is this one. You can see some blooms here. And it is putting on some new leaves. Unfortunately, I did lose my basil. Looks like they're just barely hanging on a couple of them. They might go ahead and go to seed, which is what I wanted to do was to save the seeds off of them. But they look pretty beat up as well. It's just adjusting to the temperature when you move them outside. And I've got new, new basil planted anyway. The rosemary that I have just absolutely loved being moved back outside. You can see that it is putting on all new growth. I did find some sage that had reseeded itself from last season and I went ahead and uh, transplanted it into a pot and you can see this one right here in particular is just taking off like crazy. The other ones are trying to catch up and then I had actually broken this tomato plant. It did not get killed in the snowstorm that happened about a week ago, but it uh, it got broken. <laughs> so I just kind of stuck it back down in there and put some more soil back da back up around it. And um, it looks like it rerooted itself. It's still struggling a little bit, but it did root and you can tell it has some new growth on the top. So I think it's going to pull through and still working on this area over here. I've got some more pots to get soiled up and get things planted in them. We're just kind of slowly going along because this spring has been kind of been crazy. It's been very cool. Um, we're almost in June and uh, I mean it's typical for Wyoming to have cold temperatures all the way into June. We can even have a snowstorm in June. Um, let's hope not for that because it would kill everything out here at this point because I just bit the bullet and started planting. We're supposed to get another cold snap this weekend coming up. So kind of been keeping an eye out for that. Um, we'll take my tomatoes back inside. The rest of my tomatoes and uh, things that are more uh, warm loving, I will not be putting outside until after this cold snap. And then after that, I, I don't have any other choice than to put them outside because otherwise we'll run out of season. Anyway, this is the area where I planted some kale and some beets. I put a beets mix in here. It's called colorful beets meat mix and it's just all sorts of uh, species of beets that I went ahead and put in here and unfortunately because we have the bird feeder here looks like a lot of sunflowers have came up over here because we have sunflower seed in our bird seed mix so I'm gonna have to get in here and uh, I hate to, but I'm going to have to pull all of these sunflowers because they are a bird feed variety. So they're not very tall. They're not very big. They just have seed heads where they put seeds into bird feed. I have different types of sunflowers that I want to get planted. I may transplant a few of them just to see what they turn into. I mean, they look beautiful, but they're, you know, they're going to be cover for my other plants and I can't do that. So my beets are coming up. They're a little bit difficult to see in there. You can probably see them just a little bit. And uh, my rutabaga, got a few of those up, but I think I'm gonna have to replant some of them because I think the birds may have uh, came in and got some. And I've, I went ahead and moved a couple of my um, pinwheels out here. So that way it kind of deter the birds. And I'm gonna ask, uh, put up some sticks with some streamers on them as well and then get this fenced. We have not been able to get the fence yet that we were going to put in here. I actually have some fence, but I think it's going to be a little too difficult to try to use it because it's really flimsy. 
So I'm going to try to put a decent fence up to keep the dogs from running through it because this is the direction they want to go when they go potty because the grass in the uh, side yard is over there. That's the north side of the house that you're looking at. You can see my little fence that I put out there for the dogs when they come outside for long periods. Um, we did get our planters over here. And I just love this thing, even though it falls over a lot in the wind. I love this thing. And we got these planted. I'm going to have to put some more soil in here because it kind of went down when it was watered. And then I put in all kinds of different flowers. Some violas and some pansies. And um, I forget what these are called. But we did get all of that planted in. You can see those down there. Um, mostly yellows and purples this season with a little bit of pink here and there. Um, got my big iron pot that's hanging in a rim of a wagon wheel that somebody had created before we moved here. And I love it. I just think it's the neatest thing to get that one planted as well. I need to water that one. And then we've got another one hanging over here next to the bird feed because they seem to not bother these. And I wanted to show you something else near on the north side. We have some lilies coming up right here. I've got all kinds of lilies that are planted in this section. Um, 15 bunches of them, I think I remember correctly. But some of them have not came back up and I'm actually trying to work a tree root out right now. As you can see, we have a tree stump right there. So this tree root had been in there and I wanted to plant some things. And so I'm gonna have to pull that out first. As you can see, it is pretty large. I've actually wrapped it up over the gutter over here so I could remember where it was at. Then I'm going to have to try to get in there and get all those little tendrils out. And you can see the bunches of lilies in here and I'm trying not to disturb those. Um, some of them are larger than the others. These are actually um, black lilies. They are very, very deep black. Some there. And you can see where I have planted something in here, actually between these two sets of lilies and here as well. And one of my stakes have fallen over with the tag. So I'm gonna have to put that one back up. These are actually French pie pumpkins. Actually over here is French pie pumpkins in these two sections. These are seeds that Suburban Homesteader Wyoming slash Arizona had sent to me. And I went ahead and got those planted and I'm gonna try them on the north side. I was letting her know in her video yesterday on Friday um, that I had did go and went ahead and planted all the seeds that she had sent me. So we've got the French pie pumpkins here and then here is the Jean Ocasiman squash. I've got two of those. I basically put two seeds in each of those holes and uh, I will keep both plants. If they both come up, I will keep them both either transplant or just make sure that they're separated pretty well. So French pie pumpkins there. I've got the Big Max pumpkins over here in kind of in the back, but not really. They get more sun exposure over here. And then I planted as well, I think that was zucchini. Let me check and see. I don't remember exactly. Nope, nope, it's actually acorn squash. So I planted some acorn squash in here. So I've got, um, I believe nine holes that have been dug through here. So there should be loads of vines that'll be taking over this area once the lilies are finished blooming. This is a peony that I had picked up last season at Walmart and it has come back out and actually is twice the size that it was at Walmart. So I'm hoping to see a bloom this season. And I don't remember the color that it had listed on it, but I think it's a really deep pink. So we will find out once it blooms, if it blooms, this season it may take it until next season to bloom because when I got it it was on clearance and it had already um, grown for the season and was actually dying back when I picked it up so I am so happy to see that it came back and then over here is the first converted kitty pool that we have so I still have the net on it to keep the birds out of there and you can see all of my strawberries came back and I need to get in here and weed this because now that it's been around a couple of years it has started to pick up weeds uh, from seeds that blow into it or birds carry into it or did before we put the netting on. So I need to get in there and weed that and uh, fertilize these strawberries. We even have some blooms on one so we'll have strawberries coming up soon. And then of course we've got some more um, lilies through here. 
And then my rhododendron I had planted a couple of years ago struggled and struggled and came back out really strong this season. So we might actually see a bloom out of this rhododendron. When I first got it, it was bloomed all over, but it has not bloomed for the last two seasons because it has struggled so hard to try to live here. And I had to put in some mere acid and a few things last season. And so finally, looks like it's gonna take off and grow. It didn't have any trouble getting established this season. So looking forward to seeing if we can get a bloom on it. And just bear in mind, I may have to go into a part two because this uh, phone only does 15 minutes of video before it cuts off one. I need to get in here and get all this landscape fabric out um, because we're starting to plant other things here. So, and we just have had so many wind storms. Let me show you my yard. You can see all of the sticks from all of the wind storms that we've had this season it looks terrible i have done so much cleaning and still have so much to do from all of this wind and i know that people all across the nation are complaining about the wind if you also remember from last season i did not get any irises that bloomed last season because i was doing a whole lot of weeding and things around them and i think it just disturbed them too much this season they are going to bloom unfortunately i have a load of grass that has been growing into the irises so I'm gonna have to get in there and try to read it out again try to put some more mulch see what I can do to try to bring those irises back because they are going to bloom without trying to disturb them and then I've got gladiolas all along the fence there that are just completely covered in grass and weeds um, the grass and weeds this season came back with a fury so I've got to try to figure out how to get in there and get that all out of there and get that remulched so anyway, let's go back over to the garden area. And I've been throwing some watermelons out to the squirrels and things. Anyway, I had extended out the garden as much as I could this season by wrapping it all the way around this tree. And this is on the other side from the main garden. So you can see there, that would be where my beets and um, the rutabaga and the other things that I had shown you earlier are and I just basically put about a four foot strip all the way around and I'm going to get the tiller in here and see if we can till all of the rest of this up because you can see some weeds are growing in here I've got some beautiful hostas over here that bloom every season I want to try to get nurtured a little bit more maybe separate out some bulbs and get them started in other places um, and there's a lily over here that needs to be pulled out that never gets to bloom because it's right up against this um, that goes down to the basement. And so I just need to get in here and do a whole lot of things. But you can see that we have started with at least about a four foot strip all the way around. And then we will continue it on up through here until we get to this back area where it is too shaded to try to put anything in except for maybe the hostas. And I'm going to try to get those to separate out and go in, in that section. Anyway, we've got so much going on through here. We've got some bok choy that's been planted in here, as well as I put in some Swiss chard. We've got rainbow Swiss chard through here. And this does get some sun um, during the day, not quite as much as the open main garden. But it does get some sun so i'm hoping the swiss chard will do okay over here and i'll probably plant some more in another section just to see make sure that we get some and i did plant some more squash through here there's some gray zucchini right through here three hills of it as well as i planted behind my rutabaga the boston morrow that suburban homestead or wyoming slash arizona sent us so i got those planted there two hills of those with two seeds each my rutabaga looks great. It had bloomed this season, so I had to take the bloom out of the center, and um, I'm not sure if it's gonna put on more leaves this season or if we'll have to wait till next season. It's a little ragged because it got kind of tore up when I was going through with the tiller and doing all of this, but um, well, they're just here to get established, not really do a whole lot this season. Anyway, we're gonna go into a part two of the Gordon tour. I wanted to show everybody the garden while it is still daylight outside so we will see you in the part two and make sure you like subscribe and hit the notification bell for notices on new videos as they come out and we'll see you 
in that part two.